Yes, we want to celebrate uh, all that God has done in the past 99 years of this uh, church family. Um, I'm excited to share what the Lord has laid on my heart to you this morning. But before I do that, I'd like to pray for us one more time. Lord Jesus, we gather here today with grateful hearts. Lord, this place, um, it means so much to us. And Lord, so many memories, Lord, here that are treasured. So many testimonies. God, of your power at work in the hearts and lives of your people. It is all grace. And so for all of this, Lord, we want to give you praise. And so, Lord, we just, we thank you today. We thank you for the privilege of being able to gather here. We thank you for the opportunity to remember, God, all that you've done inside and outside these four walls. And God, we're hopeful. We're hopeful, Father, that you, the same God who has carried us 99 years, Lord, will carry us 99 more to create new memories. Lord, for the next generation, new testimonies, God, of your faithfulness and of your power and of your mercy, God, which I knew every morning. And so we give you praise for the past. We give you praise for the present. And we give you praise, God, for the future. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a Bible, I invite you to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Today we celebrate 99 years of the faithfulness of God. And because of our great and sovereign God is the God of history. We're able to reflect on the past and recount the mighty deeds of God as well as look to the future and hope that the same God who carried us this far will stretch out His hand in power to carry us to the future. I want to reflect this morning on God's faithfulness, past, present, and future as we, His people today, seek to walk by faith and not by sight. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Walking forward by faith. Walking forward by faith. Our text this morning is going to be Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. If you're able and willing, I invite you to stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up, so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this... He condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called out to go to a place that he was to receive as inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, 
who were born, uh, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar. And having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country. That is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared for them a city. Amen. Word of God. We're going to look at this text from three angles this morning. Number one, we build by we build in faith. We build in faith. Number two, we walk in faith. We walk in faith. And then number three, we step into the next generation by faith. We step into the next generation by faith. First, what we want to see is that we build in faith. What am I talking about here? Well, Today, we want to look at the past, the present, and the future. The first thing we want to look at is the past. We build in faith. How the saints who have gone before us built this place in faith. We can learn from the example of Noah here. He said uh, that in reverent fear, he constructed the ark, verse 7. And by this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Now, as we think about Noah... Let's reflect on what was happening with him. God told Noah that judgment was coming. Now, if I told you that a worldwide cataclysmic flood was coming, you would probably smile and nod your head and then turn away to someone at the side and say, Chad lost his rocker. (laughs) It's out of his mind. He had no reason whatsoever. He... Noah could not pull up a weather prediction. He couldn't look at the geological processes. The only thing he had to believe that that this worldwide cataclysmic judgment was coming, the only evidence, the only thing that he had to lean upon was the word of God. That's it. That's all he had. He had, so all he had to do, what he had to do, was to take it on faith. Faith that contrary to all human experience. And that's what we like to do as humans, right? We we only, we live based on our experience. And if we have never experienced something, nine times out of ten, we would say, oh, that would never happen. We can't put it in a test tube. We think that that could never happen. But, but. The average person in Noah's day, right, they had no reason whatsoever to expect a coming judgment other than the Word of God. Noah exercised what the Bible calls faith. We recently looked at at faith just a a few weeks ago, a deep dive in faith here. And we talked about then how faith is not a leap in the dark, but it's a reasonable and confident trust in a trustworthy person. So there's a, world, there's, a, there's a worldly way of thinking, there's an unspiritual, godless way of thinking, and then there's a spiritual way of thinking. From a surely secular perspective, you would think, well, this flood has never happened before, and you know, it's just like everything's going on, and there's no reason to think that it would happen. It's probably not going to happen. That's thinking without God in the picture. But Noah, apparently, was the only righteous person on the planet, and, and he's thinking from a godly perspective, and thinking from a godly perspective, we could think that he reasoned something like this. Well, let me think. Let's see. God created all things. God made all things, including me. He made humanity in his image, unique of all creation, to know him, to love him, and to serve him. And yet we, I can look around and see that all of humanity is in complete rebellion against God. Right? It says there in Genesis that the, the thoughts and intentions of the heart of man were only evil continual. Except for Noah. And so he can reason like this. Well, well God's a just God. He's not going to let evil go and punish. The world is evil. Why wouldn't judgment come? Why wouldn't it come? And if nothing 
nothing else makes sense. If God said it's going to happen and God is a trustworthy God, I better take Him at His word. Amen. So that, my friends, is called faith. It's trusting God. It's taking God at His word. And so it says that in concerning events yet unseen, he believed God, and in reverent fear, he built the ark. And in so doing, the text said, that he, it says that he condemned the world. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that his faith condemned the unbelief of everyone else. His lie exposed their darkness. You see, the building of the ark revealed the condition of everyone else's heart. Because it forced the question. When Noah in faith built the ark, then everybody else in the world at that point had a decision to make. Either I'm going to get on the ark or I'm not. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you like God, if you, if you, it doesn't matter if you know you like the big man upstairs. At the end of the day, look, you got to get on the ark. You can have all the positive opinions about God that you want, but if you don't get on the ark, you're going to be swept away in the flood. Right. The ark forced the question. It, it, it said, God, it was God who know it, saying, this is the means of salvation. Amen. This is the way, the only way to escape the coming wrath. is to get on the ark. And we know that we know that nobody did, except for Noah and his family. That's it. They're the only ones. But Noah saved, he saved humanity, because if he hadn't done that, then there'd be no, no one would be here. But his faith saved humanity. Now what does this have to do with us? Well, this is what I think it has to do with us. 99 years ago, another family of people acted in faith. <clears throat> and they heard the call of God upon their hearts to build an ark, as it were, in this community. A place where people could come to to find salvation from the coming wrath. So people in this community obeyed the vision that God put on their hearts and in reverent fear of the words of Jesus the words of Jesus who said this in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. He said, For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Noah looked crazy building an ark out in the middle of nowhere. And, it, it, and to many people, it will sound just as crazy to them if I stand behind this pulpit and say, with, with fear and trembling in my heart, brothers and sisters, judgment is coming. You can think I'm joking, you can think I'm playing games, you can think I'm crazy. But I'm telling you, judgment is coming. Amen. And God has provided a way of escape, and His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you enter into Christ by faith, and if you trust in Christ by faith, and unite yourself to Him and trust in God, Jesus will deliver you from the coming wrath. But if you don't get on the ark, if you don't Get into Christ by faith. There's no hope. There is a way. There is one way. It's one more way than we deserve. And His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And those saints 99 years ago, they knew that. And they built this church. Not a building, but a gathering of people who together have run to the only way of escape. And they established this church as a place in the community where other people could run to to escape by faith. To not be overwhelmed by the fire. And so we remember and praise God today that our Cottondale forebears acted in faith. To 
help people escape from what fallen humanity deserves. And today, we in this room, we're beneficiaries. We were, we're, we're beneficiaries of Noah's faith. He's the reason many of us are here. We're beneficiaries of the faith of those saints 99 years ago. Who through their testimony and witness, we have come to find a way of salvation. From the rats. So let's remember, and let's learn from their examples, that as they built by faith 99 years ago, we have to build by faith today. We receive the blessings of the faith of the past. The question is, will the generations that follow us receive the blessing of our faith? Or will the buck stop with us? We build, number one, in faith. We build in faith. Number two, we walk in faith. We walk in faith. Look again there in verse 8. It says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. And by faith he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. So we build by faith, and next we see that we walk in faith. The great example of faith in the Bible is Abraham. The author of Hebrews reminds us that Abraham obeyed God to go out to a place where, where he, didn't even, he didn't even know where he was going. And what's remarkable about that is he was 75 years old when he went. Now, I don't know how many of you are 75 years old and are ready to move to a foreign country and live in tents for the rest of your life. Any takers? Nobody? Abraham left his home, went to a foreign land at 75 years old to live in tents the rest of his life. Yeah. Why? Because God told him to go. Because God told him to go. <laughs> sometimes God, sometimes God tells you to go and don't even tell you where you're going. Sometimes he just says, walk that way, and you just got to start walking until you figure out where he's taking you. Abraham walked by faith. God told him to go to the land of Canaan, the land we also call the promised land. And we call it the promised land, of course, because it's the land that God promised to Abraham. He promised it. He promised that he would not only live in the land, but that he would possess the land. That means he would own the land. And that that land would belong to him and to his offspring forever. But there's one issue with this, right? And that is that Abraham, though he, that land belonged to him by divine right and by divine fiat, Abraham, in his earthly life, barely owned a single square foot of it. You ever think about that? He barely owned a single square foot of it. He lived as an alien, a sojourner, a stranger, a foreigner, in the land that God said was going to belong to him. Nevertheless, Abraham didn't lose faith. Why? Because it says that he believed that he who promised was faithful. In other words, Abraham knew in his heart that even if he had to live in tents the rest of his life, God wasn't going to go back on his word. That God would uphold him, preserve him, carry him. And even though he was going to be a tent dweller with his whole life, he was okay with that because he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. That is that he was okay living in a tent now because he knew that he had a home with foundations then. And so he walked by faith, not knowing where he was going. He took a band of men from his clan and fought kings to rescue Lot. He was blessed by, my, by Melchizedek. The fear of the Canaanites all around him was, was, was uh, the, the, fear of, uh, the fear of him was upon the Canaanites, not to harm him, because God was with him wherever he went. He walked by faith and not by sight. 
Because he looked forward to a city with foundations that death itself could not take away from him. And as we reflect on the saints of Cottondale who've gone before us, bringing us here today, they too walked in faith. Abraham serves as a model for us. In 1923, the brothers and sisters there in that, that picture we've been showing up, they had no idea what was coming. Anybody in here 99 years old? If you're close, don't raise your hand. <laughs> That's a long time. A lot has happened in 99 years. <clears throat> this church was started six years before the beginning of the Great Depression. It was started 16 years before the beginning of World War II. There's been wars, depressions, economic turmoil, Cold War, threat of nuclear war. A lot has happened in 99 years. And the people in 1923, I guarantee, they could look through a glass and see what the world is like today, 99 years later, they wouldn't believe that. So sort of believe But the truth is, is they, like, like everyone has to do, they walk by faith. They walk by faith. Here's the truth. We're not any different than our brothers and sisters who started this church 99 years ago. We don't know what the world's going to be like 20 years from now. We don't even know if we're, we'll be here 20 hours from now. We just don't know. We, every one of us, is a temporary resident. Nobody in this room, maybe some of you, God has blessed you with some land. Let me tell you something. None of, nobody in this room owns a square foot that they get to keep. <coughs> We're all temporary residents. We're all just passing through. We're all sojourners and strangers and aliens. And like them, like Abraham, we have to walk by faith. Trusting that the God who carried us forward these 99 years through the ministries like Brother Daniel and so many others, the God who's carried us through up to this point, that he's going to keep carrying us. That God's not going to look down in 2022 and say, well, I think I'm just going to let them go now. But that he's going to push us and help us and carry us forward all the way through. 99 years of gospel ministry. Undoubtedly, not like every ministry, there were highs and lows. There were ecstatic joys, deep sorrows. But they never lost sight, and neither can we, that we are sojourners now. But we have permanent citizenship in a place that's coming. We might not get to keep, we might not get to keep anything we have now. Look, it's all temporary. The only thing that's last, the only place that'll last is the place that Jesus is preparing for us. That's, that's home. That's home. And these saints of Cottondale that have gone before us, they have already now entered into the joy of their master. Amen. They didn't leave home. They went home. <laughs> And they're way better off than us. So we too, now, until God tells us to come home, we must walk by faith and not by sight. We, we too must be okay living in the mess of this world, living as sojourners in a land that's not our own. But we can do it. And we don't have to give up. We can hold on. Because there is a city with foundations that's coming. And the same God who walked us through the unbelievable changes of the past 99 years, 
we're walking through the mud. As we walk by faith and not by sight. So we, we build in faith, we walk in faith. And finally, number three, we step into the next generation by faith. We step into the next generation. Look again there in verse 11. It says, By faith, Sarah herself can receive power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been seeking, if they have been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, heaven. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared for them. <coughs> so we build in faith, we walk in faith, and we must step into the next generation by faith. Um, I, I think most of you probably know the story of Abraham and Sarah. Not only did Abraham have to leave his, his country and his kindred to a land uh, that he, he did not know to be a stranger and, and, and sojourner there, the promise was that he would. Uh, that the land would belong to him and to his offspring forever. That God would give Abraham descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand of the seashore. Of course, if you remember the story of Abraham, uh, there was a significant hurdle to that promise. And that is that Sarah, Sarah, Abraham and Sarah were quite old and had zero children. Now, if you were building, you know, an all-star basketball team, you probably wouldn't pick a 5'3 guy who couldn't jump or shoot. <laughs> well, it turns out that God has this thing about picking people who have no chance whatsoever on their own of fulfilling the promise. Amen. So that when it happens, everyone will know that it's God who kept his promise. The fact that Abraham and Sarah were both in their 70s and had no children was not a problem for God. Because the promise is fulfilled not by the prowess of man, but by the power of God. And so we have Abraham and Sarah, and we have this problem to the fulfillment of God's promise. But God tells them what's going to happen. And in Genesis 15, verse 1 through 6, God comes to Abraham, and, and this is what it says. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you've given me no offspring, and a member of my, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars if you're able to number them. And then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord. And it was counted to him as righteousness. Abraham believed God. Maybe God shows up to some of you 70-year-olds tonight and says you're going to have a baby. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I'll, I'll let you respond to that. <laughs> Abraham believed God. Faith is taking God at his word. In Abraham, Abraham was old and he was childless. And God said, listen to me. And he walked him outside his tent. And he said, look up at the stars. And of course, it's pitch black. 
And Abraham, in his heart, he's looking up at the inky darkness, and there's just these little tiny specks of light everywhere all over the sky. And he has the Word of God coming into his heart. And he's looking at all the little specks just everywhere as far as I can see. And just somehow, somehow, just deep in his heart, he's looking at those stars. And he just knows that God's telling the truth. That those are going to be my children. He just knows. And he believes God. When all human experience would say otherwise. And it was counted to him as righteousness. But for Abraham and Sarah, faith for them meant that there was a future for their family. Because humanly speaking, they were the end of the line. But by faith, it says, Sarah conceived. And from one man, and him as good as dead, came descendants as the stars of heaven and sand of the sea. And that is all because of faith. By faith, our forebears believed in the future. A future not of a building, not of a place, but they believed in the future for our people. Because that is what the church is. We love this place. But this isn't the church. Look at me. This is the church. We are the church. What determines whether or not our church or any church has a future is not whether we're in a certain building or in a certain place. What determines whether or not our church or any church has a future Is whether or not God gives us children. Amen. Amen. Spiritual offspring. Sons and daughters of God. Birthed by God. New birth. By the power of the Spirit and by the power of the gospel. What determines the future for the church is if God gives us children. By faith. We're on the precipice of a huge step of faith. And steps of faith are hard. When Jesus was walking on the water, there's a reason only one out of the twelve got out of the boat. Because it's scary. It's hard. It's painful. This church has decided to do a hard thing. And I commend this church 10,000, a billion percent, for doing what very few churches would ever have the courage to do. Amen. To believe that by faith there can be a future. A future with spiritual children as innumerable as the sand of the sea. And as the stars of the heavens. It doesn't happen by accident. It happens by faith. It happens by faith. Will we believe? Can we believe that though we be 99 years old, God still has children for us? That there are lost souls in this county and in this world that God is going to use us as his people to share the gospel and bring to new birth and bring into the eternal family of God. As we close this morning, I just I want to invite you to just close your eyes with me for a moment. We're country folk here. Every single one, no doubt in my mind, every single one of you in this room knows what it's like to be out in the country in the middle of the night. Not a lie as far as you can see. I want you to find your place. You know where it is. Find your place. In the country, in the dark, not a lie inside. You've seen it. You're looking up to the sky. 
you can see the stars above you. I know you can. Look at them. You see them? Can you count them? I want to ask you a question. For Cottondale Baptist Church, you see the stars. Can God give us children like these? Can God give us children like these? Brothers and sisters, will we believe God? Will we believe Him? You can look at me. This is not our home. Our home is coming. Amen. Our home is the city with foundation. And I believe Jesus isn't back yet, so that means we still got time. There's still time. And I believe God has children for us. If we will, bye. And as we believe him, and he counted to us as righteousness. For his name's sake. Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, there is none like you. This church, Lord, it means so much to us. And Lord, there are, there are many God who just, their whole life has been so bound up in this place for so long. What treasured memories, what gifts that you've given us here, Lord. What a precious gift. And Lord, now we, 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 we cherish and we, we cherish and we remember the past. And Lord, now we also look to the future and we ask, what's your will, Lord? What would you have us to do? Will you, God, give us children? as the stars of heaven, and as the sand of the sea. That is our plea, God. That is our desperate cry. That the church, we the church, might live before you. That the witness and testimony of Condo Baptist Church will carry on, God, through us, through our spiritual children, through our spiritual great-grandchildren, that as we stand today on the shoulders of giants, spiritual giants, God, who walk the halls and the corridors of this church before us, may our children and grandchildren be able to stand on ours and look back upon this generation, upon this day, and upon this people, and then say they had hard decisions to make, but they believed God. And we benefit from their faith. May future generations, God, benefit from our faith today. Lord, you have blessed us and you've given us far more than we could possibly desire. We'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.